Hello, so uh, halfway through editing this, I realised that I didn't actually like a f like a proper like fancy intro, which I probably should have done uh, because this is actually my first video. Obviously, some of my future videos won't be like this, but the more feedback I get, the more I will base my stuff around what people like. Yeah, enjoy the video, boys and girls, and people that don't have gender <laughs> Generation Z or Gen Z if you're cool is a generation of information and just trauma really we grow up with the ever growing unprecedented possibilities of the internet you could speak to anyone anywhere on the globe it was an amazing and world changing invention at the time but we had no idea who we were talking to and what their intentions were. If you're a part of Gen Z, there's a good chance you're familiar with all things horror, and you, let's, let's face it, you probably spoke to a couple of nonces on your journey. So, let's reminisce on all the reasons we now require therapy in this densely packed iceberg, made by user Gus the Doge on Reddit. <laughs> William Afton, known as Purple Guy after his in-game appearance, is the main antagonist and the character you play in the game FNAF. If you don't know it, bugger off. According to the law, he was just stuffed in one of the main animatronic suits and becomes an enemy in the first, third instalment. He becomes a spring trap. It was pretty creepy, but I just remember really liking the character. I think I got my old Instagram username from it like years ago. Yeah, but that's pretty more, much all there is to it. Five Nights at Freddy's jump scares. Uh, so, if I'd be surprised if you didn't know about this game by now. This just refers to the jump scares in the game, probably the older ones, as they're a bit more iconic and most of the games came out when all of us were a bit older. I remember watching KSI and all these other YouTubers play at 6am when, when it all started up. Like many others, it scared me shitless. Agamemnon counterpart. I'm not. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Scare Theatre probably does a better job than me. You probably want to go over to his videos. Much, much better, well spoken than me. So what this is, it's it's an art project made by film students uh, Michael Robinson and Jason Kovac in 2001, as well as the main animator, just called simply called Dave, mentioned in the description. He did most of the drawings, but I can't really find anything on this bloke, so you're just gonna have to go off what I tell you. The short animation was for a competition for unusual out-of-the-box short films. The animation itself is 1 minute 30 seconds. The animation seems like an attempt to be like weird or scary, and it just comes off as confusing. I, to be honest guys, I doubt we won it. The screams that you hear, is they're quite eerie. Some people say that these screams came from a rape case in Japan. The, the the person screaming does appear to be male and the rape victim was female. But they're actually just from a film called Cry With, With From Within, so there's nothing really too scary about this. So basically, it's just an art project that got onto this side of YouTube. Giga Bowser. If you ever played Smash Bros, which you probably have, you'll know this. But if you haven't, Giga Bowser is essentially Bowser's ultimate when he sort of levels up. What he does, he just grows in size, but he changes appearance. Some kids that played it back in the day sort of found it scary. I can see why that happened, but I don't remember Bowser being like this. I remember maining Bowser a lot. He just sort of seemed like a bigger Bowser. I don't remember him looking like this scary guy. But I did hear a lot of people say that Giga Bowser scared them a bit, so fair play on that. Five Nights at Freddy's 4. We have a, another F uh, FNAF entry. There's been a lot of them so far and I doubt they'll stop. It's, it's a really like popular game, especially with Gen Z and it's pretty scary. A lot of people were exposed to it pretty young. Some got scared off of it, some just sort of their fear, some, some people's fears died down and they started just liking the game, thought it was. There's not much to say about this other than the fact it was pretty scary. Uh, I played it quite a couple weeks ago. I got it from the Game Pass on my Xbox. Played it around a bit. It was quite scary, but 
not too bad. It's a bit difficult, but it just gets boring in the end. Minecraft mobs. So unless this is some sort of creepy pasta, I'm going to assume this is just the mobs in Minecraft. Back in the early days of Minecraft, absolutely everyone was scared to death by the mobs that come out at night. If you've started playing the game recently, then no matter what your age, you'll probably be quite scared of them. I don't think anyone was scared by their appearance, it's just sort of the risk of just losing your shit and going back and other cool stuff. Everyone was scared to death of the mobs that would come out at night. Most chose to stay in. Whereas now, we're stomping around in full and shot and netherite keeping them as pets. We're bloody mental, aren't we? Creepy pasta. Okay, right. I absolutely loved this stuff when I was younger. I still kind of am interested in it now, but it is a bit cheesy. They they really scared me shitless. I remember like having to sleep in my sister's room because I just kept on being scared of them. Specifically Jeff the Killer, to be honest. Essentially, creepy pastas are just scary stories from the internet, so they do cover a lot of ground, which is why you've probably heard of it. They're usually about some weird serial killer, like Jeff the Killer, stuff like that. But they can be anything from thought experiments, paradoxes, cognito hazards, SCP, and many others. While I'm on about SCP, we'll probably be seeing some down the list, so don't worry if you haven't heard them. I'll explain them a bit more. Luigi's Mansion Beta Game Over. So yeah, when I was younger, the opening title absolutely scared the shit out of me. <laughs> to the point where I just couldn't be bothered to play it because I just thought oh, I'll just be too scared. I was very, I was a very scared kid. I remember being scared by the weirdest stuff, but I didn't really find this scary, but I understand how like when you're younger you could. I, I remember seeing it and being like, oh, that's a bit scary. I thought it was a fan game uh, or like animation, but no, it's just the actual original Nintendo. So here it is. I'm just gonna play off. I'm just gonna play it here. It's pretty pretty short. Woo! Alright, that's bloody scary. Vulgar Mario Sprite animations. Uh I don't know if this spelling is right as in the word vulgar, or it's something to do with some sort of animator, but I couldn't actually find anything on this one, so sorry about that. Haunted Gaming. So Haunted Gaming was a series by some ordinary gamers, my boy Mooha. In this series I talked about creepy pastas and anything creepy surrounding around video games. Well, I didn't watch his videos until I was relatively older. I imagine other kids that did probably got scared by these. Scary car commercial. Well, the word is actually advert, but I'll let this user slide. Probably a filthy American. This is an absolute classic. You all know it. Here it is, but warning there is a jump scare, obviously. So if you don't want to see it, then just skip ahead about 15 seconds. inflation scenes okay so there's not there's not going to be any photos for this one for obvious reasons but all that i could really find or think of was the weird fad that came about like quite a few years ago where people would draw your favorite characters like mario sonic woody from toy story and these characters would appear with their stomachs inflated so they either ate a lot or just are pregnant Pretty weird thing, but it, I think it's a fetish, and all these drawings were just very, were just soft porn for people with these fetishes, so just go on England, I guess. Kephoria of all animations. Pretty much the same thing as the last one with the inflated bellies, but this time, with the voice, the scenario of a character eating another character and the character being just stored in their stomach. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, but that's all good. But the word Kephoria is just the name of a deviant artist, artist who made these. I don't know. I I don't. I haven't really heard about this up until now. So that's probably just the drawings that these artists did. Spanish MS Paint. So I couldn't actually find anything on this. Googling this just 
leads to a ton of articles about this woman using MS Paint, making really good photos, so that's a really good photo, I'm proud of her. It could be talking about some creepy Microsoft Paint uh, cartoons back in the day, but probably not. Spongebob parodies. There was a lot of these a while back, and most weren't really creepy until my best mate Nigahiga, I think that's how you pronounce it, I'm not going to pronounce it any other way. He made one, and this one scared a lot of us back in the day. I used to be a big fan of this, luckily I never saw this, because I've reckoned it would probably scare me. But yeah, this is the most I could find on this. Zim harvests his peers inside, inside him. This title is all over the place for some reason, but I think this is referring to an episode of Invade of Vim where the protagonist Zim is supposedly harvesting a couple of kids' organs or something. I couldn't really find any downloadable versions of this episode, but not many of us watched the show, so don't really care. Anyways, it is a bit creepy scenario if you just sat in your bedroom just watching your favourite character eat kids. Scar's death. So you definitely know about this one. It's from the scene from Lion King when the lion Scar is like the, the evil bloke. Scar falls after a fight off a cliff and then he gets targeted by a hungry pack of these hyenas I assume they are. I can only assume that by the noises, the laughs that they do. Many were upset and traumatised from this. Probably the scary part comes in from how the hyenas, hyena blokes looked and acted. Scary Maze Game. So yeah, this was another absolute classic that took the world by storm. I always knew it was a piss take, so it was pretty funny hearing about my mates getting petrified by it, but it's essentially it's just a maze game. You go through a maze, you're a little square. Um, I think if you die, you get jump scared. Sailor Moon villains. I couldn't really find anything on this one. Maybe people just thought the villains from the anime Scalar Moon were really scary. Scalar Moon. <laughs> people just thought the villains from the anime Sailor Moon were proper scary. They look quite normal, but then again, you get scared by everything when you're a kid. So. Missing no. Missing No is a sort of secret glitch Pokemon from both games Pokemon Red and Blue. Many thought it was just some sort of ghost or creepy little thing, but as always, uh, Nintendo, obviously the people who made the game, they debunked this a while ago, and it's actually on Glitchpedia. But the scary thing is, or seemingly scary at the time, it could corrupt all your save game data, so if you've got like a level 100 Charizard, you definitely know I don't play Pokemon. Yeah, but if you've got like a proper good Pokemon, it, you, you're fucked. Spongebob close-ups. I don't know why, but on my script I've got Spongebag written, but Spongebob was an absolutely elite program. It always will be. Absolute banger. This is referring to the super realistic close-ups animated drew of the characters to express their emotions. While seeming tame now, it, is, it obviously has scared a lot of us back in the day, and it is pretty weird. Like, why would you put that? there for all kids to see. I guess they wouldn't know because they haven't been a kid in like years but it is pretty scary. So that does us for tier one. I'm gonna whack off this video here. All right, that's a good an analogy. Yeah but I'm gonna end this video here. Let me know if you want another one. If not I'll probably most likely go on to some other topics but if I do enjoy it because I probably won't get a lot of feedback on my first video. I will go back on, but this did take me quite a bit of time, so please give me a cheeky like, and um, yeah, uh, I love you.